good morning again. I think we can start. So welcome to CyberSec Plus webinar brought to you by Hermitess Solutions. Let me remind you that Hermitess Solutions is a value added distributor of IT security and infrastructure solutions. And every month we organize these CyberSec Plus webinars about the most relevant cybersecurity topics. Today we are going to talk about data classification and that's why we have our guests today, Ben and Jens, who will introduce us why data classification is the cornerstone of regulatory compliance, such as GDPR. But more about that, you will hear from them. Um, before we get started, a few uh, reminders. Uh, everyone of you is muted. So if you have any questions, just drop them into the chat. And we are recording this webinar. So tomorrow in the morning, you will get the recording. So if you have a, any reason to step away, don't you worry. So from my side, that's it. Uh, I wish you have a nice webinar. So Ben, Ian, floor is yours. So whenever you're ready, please take it away. Brilliant, thank you very much, Simona. Um, so on behalf of everyone at Help Systems, uh, I just want to say welcome to, to this morning's webinar on data classification, some of the help system solutions, and, and how we can help organizations achieve uh, compliance. So I also just want to say thank you. I know everyone is very busy. Um, webinars are, are becoming quite common. And so I really appreciate you uh, taking the time out of the day today to just spend some, some time with Ben and I understanding a bit more data classification. So Ben, if you could just go to the next slide, please. So today we're just going to do a very quick introduction, um, have a look at some of our solutions and how we can help secure data, sort of look at the questions around what is data classification and how does it fit into our, our, our stack of data security solutions, what are the, the sort of challenges that, uh, that customers face um, within, within regards to, to data security, and how can how has data classification helped all these customers achieve compliance. I'm also going to take it one step further and show how classification not only produces uh, gains compliance within an organization, but can also have some really positive, uh, what we call business process outcomes. So some really, uh, some other value added um, stuff that, that makes it really worthwhile. And then Ben is going to finish off by, by giving a very quick demonstration of Titus in action. So as I said on the call today, you've got myself, I'm the uh, Alliance as a partner manager for help systems, looking after data security within EMEA. <clears throat> and I've also got my, my lovely colleague, Ben. Ben, do you just want to give a very quick introduction to yourself? Sure, yeah, thank you, Ian. Uh, ben Austin, I'm a, a solutions engineer here at help systems, working in the data classification, data protection, data security uh, side of the business. Um, my role is to uh, to understand technically how uh, users are, and our partners need to uh, use our, our products to uh, make sure that we're, we're fulfilling the, the requirements uh, and providing the, uh, a compliant and secure uh, solution to, uh, to the data classification needs. Thanks, Ben. Just click to the next slide, thanks. So just a quick introduction about help systems. We're actually nearly 40 years old, so we're not just a startup, and, and I, I wouldn't be surprised if it's a, uh, an organization or a brand name that, that you've never come across. So hopefully, by the end of this, this demonstration, you'll understand some of the, the brands that we look after. We've got a huge global presence with offices on, on every continent, with almost 1,500 busy employees working for us. There's, uh, we have about 25,000 customers worldwide. And like I said, although Help Systems isn't a particularly well-known brand, the, the, the solutions that we, that we own are, and, and actually 22 of the top 25 Fortune 500 companies have a Help Systems solution deployed within their environment. So it's quite, it is, we, are, we are quite well-known, but, but just not widely recognized. Historically, Help Systems is focused on process automation and has, has been really successful, but the concentration moving forward is really on security, and this is what we're going to sort of focus on today. It's not 
just us talking about um, and saying how important security is though. Sorry, Ben, if you could flick back one slide. It, this is a, a, this is a, a release from, a, this is a statement from a, a published Forrester report. And so we're just reiterating, it's not the fact that, the, that we're just saying that, that data protection is important. Uh, protecting your data really does start from knowing where it is and what it is. So it's how how can we secure something, i.e. data, if we don't know what it is, where it is, or or who created it, and you know how old is it, and most importantly, is it sensitive? You know, if it was leaked, how much damage could it potentially cause the organisation? So Ben, if you could flip forward, thanks. So help systems, we we really see data security falling within three columns. So the, the first column is, is really understanding the data, you know, what data do we have? Where does it reside? Who has access to it? You know, and under this, has it got PII or PCI that's as relevant to GDPR? Has it got PHI, you know, personal health information, which uh, is, is relevant to, to North America in, in HIPAA? Um, or, or is it specifically got content related to uh, military contracts or or something like that, because you know, if you have any, um, uh, if, you, if you deal with, with military, then ITAR regulations are, are probably going to be relevant as well. So we really need to, to really understand what the data is. Once you understand it, you can then lay down some, some rules on how you're going to govern it. So once we, we know how sensitive the data is, we can start applying some rules uh, to, to protect it. We know what, what's valuable, we know where to invest, uh, and you know what is not valuable or sensitive either. So that if it's redundant information, then we can cleanse the repository of, of um, data that's no longer needed and, and potentially save on storage costs. So we can apply rules if, if for example, a uh, piece of sensitive data is, is applied as internal, we can make sure that it's not sent to a printer or it's emailed to uh, recipients outside of the organization or outside of certain distribution lists. We can apply rules that if it's you know top secret, we have to make sure that it's in it's encrypted. Um, or we can apply and enforce digital rights management as a result as well. And then once we've got these rules, like I said, then we can really start to protect it. I've already just touched on on digital rights management, but we can also how do that how do we share the sensitive data because you know working collaboratively and as multinational organizations we need to be able to share information internally and externally and, and how can we do that securely you know, so we can start to look at uh, options such as secure managed file transfer uh, or, or or digital rights management so by doing these three steps we can really ensure that we reduce the risk of data breach and and prove during an audit that controls are in place to secure sensitive data so on this next slide, we've taken a bit of a deeper dive into these three, uh, these three columns. And these are the solutions that help systems own that, that can help you achieve the, the three steps. So under the first step of, of understanding your data, we've got data classification. And within this, we've also got an element of data discovery. So the first step in the journey of understanding what data you've got is really uh, looking into your file stores and your repositories and understanding where the data is, what data it is, um, and, and, and where it resides. Once you know this and you understand this information, you can then apply classification using Titus or Bold and James, the, the best of breed market leading data classification tools. The next step is using DLP and email security. We can apply the handling rules imposed by classification reacting to metadata and providing a secure perimeter to your data. While email security product, um, Agari, this can scan for inbound attacks that come in via email, sort of phishing attacks, that sort of thing. And then lastly, protecting the data. We can share the data securely and efficiently so we can automate lengthy processes and, course, and ensure security and speed of transfer achieved using managed file transfer. And lastly, our digital rights management solution, Vera, uh, so this allows users to easily share data with specific contacts, but remain in control of the credentials, the credentials, and therefore remaining in control of the data. 
So we're really offering data security every stage of the life cycle. So no matter where you might be in a data security project, it's likely that we're going to be able to assist. And if you could flip to the next slide, please. So really, what is data classification? So it's a solution that applies visual markings and persistent metadata tags, either by the user or automatically using machine learning, based on the content and sensitivity of data being handled. This is ensuring that data is classified before it is edited, saved, printed, or sent by an email. The key difference between Titus and its competitors is the level of sophistication, flexibility, and granularity that we can achieve, making sure that Titus fits your data security policy and not the other way around, where we're trying to make the policy fit a limited solution. So we just I'm just going to ask Simona to open up the poll, poll number one. Do you currently have a data classification solution? Yes or no? I'll give you a couple of minutes. Okay, so that's good. So a vast majority of the, the audience do have a data classification policy. Um, so it's interesting that, that an equal number also don't. So be good to, um, if you have any questions at the end of the, of the session, we can, we can certainly help you of how you can create a, a data security policy if you're looking to. Ben, if you go to the next slide, please. It's one of my favorite slides and it really, uh, it really shows data classification um, because everyone is, everyone is familiar with, with moving house and shipping companies have been doing data classification for, for, for many years but since the, the start of time. So shipping companies must communicate to people and to machines the nature of the content that has been invisible inside the box. Like data classification, they do this with the visual markings and the metadata. So handlers need to know things like, is it breakable? Yeah. How should it be stored? Can it be this, this way up? This way there contains glass. Can this package get wet, for example? And they do all these with, like you can see these little, little markings on the side of the box. And they do this with, like I said, the visual markings, the classification barcodes. These will also be the metadata or the data about the data. And these classifications are permanently fixed to the box and is persistent no matter where the box goes. Any person who handles the box at any point in the chain of custody will know, don't get it wet, handle with care, and they'll know how to store it. And machines can read the barcode and gather more information. So the same thing applies to data classification. The data is identified and labels are applied. And typically these labels initially are simple, easy to read and relevant to the users. Persistent metadata is then applied, which usually contains much more granular and descriptive information on the sensitivity and the context of the data. And the data classification solution can be used to optimize security investments by providing the handling instructions to downstream technologies, including DLP, secure email, digital rights management, file syncs and sharing, and archiving. Labels are the visual markings that humans can read, and the metadata is the machine readable markings. So we touched on driving a downstream technology. There are many technologies that can benefit from being able to read the metadata. We provide a simple set of instructions that allows the downstream technology to react faster and reduce any failures. 
This provides a better return on investment for your existing ecosystem. We kind of like to think of metadata being the sort of glue that holds a, a, a data security ecosystem together. So there's probably lots of uh, vendors that you're familiar on, with on this slide. All of them can react to, to metadata, therefore making the making decisions quicker and, and therefore the process much more efficient. So what makes Titus truly different? Machine learning allows for automation, it speeds up the process and allows organizations to, to lever the efficiencies to, to classify their data. Secondly, the ability to classify most applications with assistant metadata. And if this can't be achieved, then we can also classify data using the alternative data stream to apply labels. There is practically not an application or a file type that we can't apply a classification to. We've even had customers applying classification to x-rays. Try us, we're, we're sure to find a, a, a solution fit for your purpose. So the third point, the granular information or sensitivity on the context of the data allows for downstream technology to react far more proactively as more detail is provided and a better decision can be made. In the case of DLP, for example, we're reducing false positives. The fourth point, a unique data classification engine that allows for total flexibility when designing and implementing a data classification solution. This is not just a one size fits all. And like I said, we're not trying to make your policy fit the solution. And lastly, ready to drive the downstream technology solutions to further enhance the security stance like rights management and encryption, archiving or data governance. Here are some of the data protection challenges organizations of all size face. Organizations are at risk for several reasons, whether it's data at rest or data at creation, applications like Office 365, SharePoint, OneDrive, they're all creating petabytes of unstructured data that is likely to include sensitive information. This data lacks identity and context, which makes it really difficult to understand what to protect. Organizations are exposed as data is shared internally and externally with little guardrails or rules. We are now even more exposed as the world goes back to work after the lockdowns and we find ourselves in, in a remote environment. And lastly, this creates user friction and impacts productivity. False positives, for example, from DLP and CASB occur because, fire, because solutions can't properly identify the data. And lastly, as compliance is always a key challenge for organizations, they are looking to adopt data classification solutions. And then the all important slide about compliance. So GDPR doesn't explicitly mandate data classification. However, having it deployed is a step in the right direction as it shows that the controls are in place to protect sensitive data, customer or internal, for example, if a sub subject access request is received, an organization has 30 days to provide the data. If classification is deployed, then uncovering the sensitive data becomes a much simpler job. There are other regulation and compliance mandates that actually state classification is a requirement. So for example, ITAR, you need to have data classification to, to achieve ITAR compliance. But NIST, then ISO 27001, all quite common within the EU and, and within our region, they require data classification to achieve compliance. Outside of Europe, you know, there are uh, compliance criteria in the form of HIPAA and the CUI. They also state that we must have data classification in place to protect sensitive data, whether it be customer or, or internal. Go to the next slide, please. So how do we approach data protection? So if we break it down into three steps, the first, identify the characteristics of the data. What is the policy? What is sensitive and what is not? We need to instruct users and the technology within the ecosystem on how to handle the data. The second step, we need to understand and express the identity, build a policy and a labeling schema 
that is easy to understand and is relevant to the users who are adopting it. Who is going to require certain levels of classification and why? Is it relevant to their role? And lastly, using granular policy to apply protection appropriate to the sensitivity. As I was once told, we need to work smarter and not harder. Can go to the next slide, please, Ben. So Article 5 states that data needs to be processed in a manner that ensures appropriate security of the personal data, including protection against unauthorized or unlawful processing and against accidental loss, destruction or damage using appropriate technical organizational measures. So we're assuring that we can help achieve GDPR compliance by highlighting and using labels and metadata to show special requirements or measures avoiding users sending data to the wrong recipient. I mean, let's face it, we all done it at some point. Outlook's autofill in the, in the email um, function to the recipient is, is a nightmare. We're trying to send a, an email to someone internal and accidentally we send it to the wrong person. Um, data classification helps prevent this from happening. There's ongoing user education on security policy through the use of the tool. This has the effect of reducing training costs around compliance. And if a breach does occur, then classification puts organizations in a position to identify the data that was breached and act accordingly. Subject access requests can be expedited if an organization has classification because PII can be located quicker as it's labeled. And again, working with downstream technology such as DLP and data management tools ensuring that data is only kept for as long as required under GDPR um, requirements. So Simone, if you could just release poll two, do you see a regulatory need for data classification? Okay, I'm pleased with that because, yeah, definitely uh, regulatory, uh, well, regulations and, and compliance do, if they don't explicitly state you need data classification, then 100% is gonna, is gonna help you achieve compliance in that nature. Ben, can you go to the next slide, please? So this is the first of one of our use cases. Uh, it's actually a global insurance company. Um, they, they had a, an external review that outlined the organization needed to have a better view of their unstructured, unstructured data, especially sensitive data. And should a breach occur, then they would be able to react quicker and show to have a control of their data. So the requirements were to understand the unstructured data environment and securing the supply chain. They needed to know that the customer, that they weren't sharing data with the wrong people. The solution, was, was helps with some data classifications, obviously. Um, and the, out, the outcomes, we drove down the, the number of false positives within their DLP solution, enhancing the solution's effectiveness and the return on investment. They achieved their working towards their, their unified data strategy, and they built a strong foundation for effective security. And they proved to the, to the auditors that they're all in control of their data by, by knowing where it is, what it was, and, and where it was stored. Then if you go to the next use case. So another large European insurance company, the requirements was that they were worried that they couldn't deploy a data classification solution within their, their Citrix environment. They were worried it was, it was uh, was too complex um, and they they wanted for all data to be classified both electric and physical 
So they were inquiring about solutions that could achieve this. And they, they really were keen to have a, a flexible and granular approach to their classification to make sure that it was relevant to the users and that they were using familiar terms uh, in terms of the business context that the users could understand. And lastly, they would like to drive security within, as uh, driver security awareness within the organization. So again, using data classification, we were able to, to, to show an 89% reduction in data breaches since the deployment, which is a, a huge win for the organization and, and a massive uh, benefit to deploying data classification. Um, and, and they also saw, saw this creation of a security culture as the end users were responsible and empowered for selecting the right classification for the, the types of data that they were handling, they, they were really positive on, on the uptake of the, the end users. This is the third use case and, and the last one. This is a, uh, an international aerospace and engineering organization. Um, the requirement was to scan the data they had at rest uh, in, a, in a number of different locations, such as SharePoint, network file, stairs, uh, network file stores, and OneDrive. And using the latest in machine learning capabilities to understand what exactly data was sensitive and to apply appropriate data classifications to data. The outcomes were that data was identified and classified appropriately. It was persistent metadata applied, not not uh, through the ADS, and organizations were able to understand what data they had, where they were storing the sensitive data, and they could remove any outdated data, saving on storage costs. They were also able to, to drive their digital rights management solution to, to make sure that they were, they were sharing data appropriately. And lastly, they proved that they were complying with privacy regulations. So just quickly, some, some key takeaways. Titus supports classification across all applications. It helps customers identify unstructured data and prioritizing the most valuable data first and foremost. It works to help end users understand the sensitive data and how to handle it. Metadata is kind of like the glue that pieces together the ecosystem, like I said. It, it really does drive, drive downstream technology. Any, any solution that can react to metadata is going to be able to make a far better decision on, on the type of data it's handling if the metadata is, is involved. The false positives are greatly reduced. And event log information can be exported to a SIEM or UABA or, or an instant response tool for a far greater context on, on a data breach if one does happen. And this encourages safer collaboration and reduces accidental data breaches as well. So lastly, achieving compliance and gaining business value. Like I said, I wanted to touch on some, some other positive outcomes to, um, to having data classification. It's not just about achieving compliance, there's, there's other what we call positive business outcomes. So the first one, like we said, we talk about demonstrated compliance. We're, we're hoping to, to achieve GDPR status. Sorry, Ben, if you could flip back. Yeah. Um, but secondly, we're really creating that security culture within the organization. Like I said, end users are, are empowered to consider the type of data that they're handling and apply the appropriate levels of protection to it to make sure that all data is protected effectively. In the environment that we're in at the moment after the pandemic, well, I say after the pandemic, as we're all sort of going back to work after lockdowns, we are working remotely. Collaboration is, is you know, the data security is much wider. The data security perimeter is much wider now. Classification facilitates a safer collaboration, just making sure that we're not, that any data we are sharing is being shared securely and, and is protected effectively. We're increasing business value for making sure that you know a business that knows what data it has is going to be far more valuable than a business that, that has no idea where where its data is stored or what sensitive data it has. We're reducing costs in terms of uh, we've had feedback from, from customers where 
training costs have been reduced because the ongoing training from actually using the tool has, has reduced the need for, for training for their end users. And also the, the, the cost associated with a data breach in terms of a fine, the cost to the, the business and in terms of uh, investors and stock, for example. And lastly, hammering the, the point home, we're really driving the downstream technology. So any existing um, investment that an organization has made in their data security perimeter, most likely DLP, is going to really be benefited from having data classification deployed. And an example of this, Ben, if you can just flip to the next slide, is a, an, a, an existing customer, Society General, SOPGen, they, they came, to, came to us with uh, a, an issue of false positives. Uh, it was really taking up a lot of time and, and money within their, their environment. Their administrators were, were constantly reviewing data that had gone into quarantine. They'd actually turned their DLP tool into, um, into safe mode and, and they weren't getting the most out of the investment. So we deployed data classification with them. Um, and within one week, of deploying data classification in the environment, they had an 80% reduction in false positives. So a huge, huge step in the right direction and exactly the type of tool that they were looking for to achieve the, um, the results that they wanted. So we're now just gonna have a, a very quick demonstration from, from Ben. He's just gonna talk to you, he's gonna show you Titus in, in action using um, data classification in Office and, and Outlook. It's a very short video. During the creation of this document. During the creation of this document, I had the option to apply a classification simply by clicking one of these options here in the ribbon. Depending on the classification I select, we are applying physical markings to the document, which will update as I change the classification. As well as writing physical markings to the document, we are also writing persistent metadata into the custom properties of the file. This can be an arbitrary reference or a human readable, or even both. Being able to fully customize the properties here will help you protect the document using downstream technologies like a DLP or CASB, adding another level of protection to satisfy you are doing the most you can to protect your data from being lost, misused, or compromised. As well as being able to set a classification to the document, we can also add far more granular detail. For example, with confidential selected, I have the option here to apply a partner. This can be from my pre-populated drop-down list, and I can even type my own in. This is all going to be written into the custom properties of the document and collected in the metadata. As well, if I select internal from the drop-down list, we also have this multi-selection where I can choose the departments I want to share this document with. We can use this information to compare against email recipients, for example, when trying to send through Outlook to ensure we are not sending sensitive data to the wrong people. When trying to save a document without first applying a classification, Titus will enforce a classification is implied. During the save process, as I try and save this document, Titus will scan through the document, check for a classification, and also read the content of the body of the document to make sure there are no violations. In this document, there is nothing Titus has found. So he's asking me to select a classification. Here I have the same options to select as I had in the ribbon of the document, but I also have this help me choose option. Using help me choose, I can answer a few simple yes, no questions. And based on the answer I give, Titus will apply a classification to the document and carry on letting me save. During the save process, Titus will apply the physical markings to the document, as well as the metadata into the advanced custom properties, ensuring no documents can be saved without a classification. 
As well as being able to manu manually select a classification, we can also use Citus's powerful engine to search the content of our documents and apply or suggest a classification based on the document, the content of the document that it's found. Without selecting a classification, if I try to save this document, which has some personal information, Citus has read through and found its details and given me a suggestion that PCI was identified in this document and the recommendation is restricted and it's applied the restricted as the first option. Based on the policy, I have the option to change this, but we can also enforce this classification. By selecting OK, I agree to the restricted classification and we're applying the physical markings and of course the metadata into the document properties. Now that we have created and saved our data, we can see on our desktop the documents that we have created. You can see at a glance that some of these documents have an overlay. This gives me the visibility that this data is classified and also lets me see instantly what classification is applied to this data. For example, this green overlay is public, blue is internal, yellow is confidential, and red, of course, is restricted. As well as being able to see the classification applied to documents on my desktop, I can also apply classification and change classifications based on the file type. For example, this PDF file, if I right click and select select classifications, I have the same options I had before as I did in Office, the public confidential internal restricted and I can apply a classification and change the classification based on my needs. We can apply classifications not just to Office documents, but to any file type, including text files, image files, executables, and anything that you might need to classify. Outside of Office, we're applying the classification to the alternate data stream, but we can give the same granularity of information within the classification as we can with any other document. If I have shared a classif classified document with a colleague, friend, and they, for whatever reason, want to downgrade the classification of this document, whether legitimately or maliciously, we can enforce a policy to prevent this from happening. This document is classified as restricted. And if I try and downgrade the classification, we can see that we get a warning to warn us that we are downgrading the classification. And if we want to proceed, we have to give a reason and a justification. This can be populated from a drop down list, which can be selected. And we can also require a text box to be populated for the justification of the downgrade. Every action that happens within Titus will be logged and can be reported on and audited, including the justification for downgrading documents. We can see that we've now downgraded this document to internal, but the content of the document is still sensitive. So we're giving the notification here at the bottom of the page to say there are credit card details in this document and we should assess our classification. If I try and save this document now, because of the policy within Titus looking for this information, we are going to suggest that we apply a restricted classification again to this document. We can enforce this so the downgrade can't be possible. And we can also give a suggestion as we have here. This is giving the user the immediate visibility that what they might be trying to do might not be sensible or appropriate for the content of the document and might be sensitive. Now that we have created and classified our data, we might want to share it. In Outlook, we can see we have the same options as we had in Word in our ribbon, so public, confidential, internal, restricted. Based on our policy, 
we are not applying a classification as we open up this new email. However, that is a possibility to prevent user friction when we have users that send lots of emails to uh, internal recipients, for example. Just like when creating a document in Word, Titus can also scan through the content of the body of the email when it's being sent to ensure there are no violations in the policy we have configured. If I want to send these, this credit card information to Alice and to Ken, we'll notice that Ken Adams is listed twice. One of these addresses is internal and the other is external. In this occasion, I'm going to try and send this email to Ken's other email address, and we'll see what happens when I try and send this, class, this email. You'll notice I haven't applied a classification at this stage. As I click send, it's going to read through the body of the email and it's identified that there's a credit card number. The options I have here are to correct the message by redacting this information, which will overwrite this content with uh, asterisks and, and black it out. I also have the option to go back and correct the, the email. So if I wanted to just click cancel, I can go back and find the details myself. If this is information I wanted to be able to send, I can go ahead and click send anyway. And Outlook will try to send the email. Titus has realized now that the recipients in this email might not be all from the same company and might violate the policy that we have configured. Again, the options we have here are to remove these recipients that violate our policy, or we can also send anyway. Based on our policy, we allow this send anyway, but we can also remove this button so that we have to remove these recipients and prevent them from being able to receive this email. Whilst this email is being sent, we are also going to apply physical markings to the email. This is the first line of text and the last line of text. Everything here is customizable and the position and colors and content of this, uh, these markings can be changed. As well as the physical markings, you're also writing X headers into this email, which can be used in downstream technologies like uh, encryption gateways uh, or DLP devices to pick up on the sensitivity of the content of the email. When sending emails with attachments, we can use the classification applied to the document already to assign a classification to the email. This document I'm attaching is a restricted classification and I'm going to try and send it to Alice and also the wrong Ken again. Based on the classification of the attachment, Cyphers has decided that the email also needs to be restricted and it's automatically upgraded the classification to match that. Because the recipients I'm trying to send to are outside the organization, it's warning me that restricted emails are not allowed to be sent to this recipient. Again, the same options as before, I can remove the recipients or send anyway. Just as before, during the same process, we are going to write physical markings to the documents and the same with the X headers. In this scenario, where sensitive information in the body of the email has been detected and you didn't want this to be shared, we can use the redact feature. Using redact, we can remove anything that violates our policy and send the email. When there was sensitive information in this email, we were applying a restricted classification based on the content that we found. Now that there's no violation, we have the option to choose the classification we want to select, as well as, as we saw earlier, the help me choose so that we can ask these simple questions and share the information as, as necessary. 
when the, the email has been received, we can see that the information has been blacked out. But we can also leave this mark here to give the visibility that there used to be something there to keep the context of the email. As this email is classified as public, we have not felt the need to apply any physical markings, but we are also writing the X header into the uh, properties of the email to ensure that consistency and to ensure, ensure the compliance. With this restricted email, you'll also notice that we've applied extra information into the subject line of the email. But again, we can use this information in downstream technologies or email gateways to apply other actions like encryption. During the creation. Cool. Thank you very much, Ben. So just for our, our third